Hi guys, so today we've got a pickups video for you. Uh, just going to show you some of our recent pickups. Now, you may realise obviously it's just me here. James isn't here at the moment, uh, but he will be joining us. Uh, we've not done a video together on the sofa, but on the Let's Talk Retro Sofa for quite some time. I think we were doing our um, Euro Championship, uh, what kind of thing were they called now? What are they called? Uh, prediction videos. God, go mad. Um, yeah, we are doing our European Championship prediction videos and before that I think we did a video about James going to uh, Italy, to Rome, to the uh, video game museum there. And we've just been doing lots of other things. We've been getting together each week meaning to make videos, but I think this week we fixed a computer. Um, the other week James has been building an arcade cab and it's, uh, it's done a really good job on this arcade cab. And I think there's going to be a video coming up on that soon. And we did the artwork for that one week, so we didn't get around to making a video then. So that's why I've been doing all these other videos to do with the RG Boy and uh, the Pocket Chip. So I hope you've been enjoying those. But anyway, so like I say, today's pickups. And uh, James, I know, is listening to me rambling on back over at his house. And we're going to actually join him now by uh, the uh, magic of video. So, uh, James, are you there? Hi, Colin. Yeah, James is here. And... Before I get on with my pickups, I'm interested to see what you picked up. Right then, so yes, I'm going to be starting with my pickups and uh, a little clue to what my pickups are is on my t-shirt. See, I've got my Commodore 64 shirt on and that's why I've been collecting recently, been trying to pick up some Commodore 64 games. Um, anyone that knows me knows that I love the Commodore 64 and I think I've got about 150 games in my collection at the moment. But when I was going through it the other day, I looked at it and I thought there are some classics and uh, some games that have got sort of nostalgic sort of memories for me that I've not got in my collection and I wanted to get them. So I actually started looking around on um, eBay trying to find out whether I could pick these games up as a bundle, which is pr practically impossible to get everything I wanted just in one bundle. Um, I then had a look to see whether I could buy them individually, which I could, and the prices weren't too bad. Commodore 64 prices are quite cheap uh, for the games uh, these days. but. The problem was there's always a P and P on top that people had add on maybe two, three quid, and that would put the price up quite a bit. Uh, so I decided I needed to try and get them from all one place. So I had a look on RetroGames.co.uk. Um, I don't know whether you guys know of that site. It's um, a really, it's a shop that's actually packed full with retro stuff. They have some amazing stuff on there. Not always the cheapest. They obviously, they know what the price is and what, of what things are worth. Um, but they had a load of the Commodore 64 games that I wanted and they were all sort of two, three pounds each and it was going to be one lot of P and P so it's going to be cheaper just to pick them up from them than what it was to get them on eBay. So I'll uh, show you what I got. So uh, first up is a game that was sort of got nostalgic sort of uh, memories for me and for my family. It's just a, a simple game. It's by Mastertronic. You should have Mastertronic. All the games were $1.99 and it is Vegas Jackpot. And it's just a simple um, sort of fruit machine game and uh, I used to enjoy playing it. I know my dad did. He used to, I taught him actually how to load this up on the Commodore 64 so he could play it. Um, so yeah, Vegas Jackpot. Uh, just a simple fruit machine game which uh, I enjoy playing back in the day. Um, another game, it's not, another, not sort of like a classic, but it's another Mastertronic game that I used to like playing. I used to like playing darts games and this is 180 which is uh, another classic game if you ask me, something that I always used to like playing. It's not sort of like a true classic, but it's a classic, it's got nostalgic sort of uh, memories for me. And uh, yeah, I used to really enjoy playing 180. And uh, it's one of those games where you've got like the dartboard and the hand goes round and round and then you just gotta press the fire button just at the right moment to try and uh, get the dart in the, in the treble 20 or wherever, wherever you wanted it sort of thing. So yeah, so that's 180. Uh, next up, another game which I think this one was sort of like a, a classic to some people. It's all like it was like one of those games that had like a cult following. I was used to feel, and it's another Mastertronic game actually, and that's uh, One Man and His Droid. So it's a, a sort of bizarre game where you had to go and round up these uh, sheep that were called male sheep. They were called Ramboids, I think they were called. Uh, and you had to go off and try and round them up with your uh, sort of uh, robotic sheepdog thing and uh, sort of transport them back from the planet they were on back to Earth or something like that if I remember right. It's a long time since I actually played it properly. But uh, yeah, it was a game that had a bit of a cult following. 
Um, oh, a lot of my friends used to play it and I used to play it. So, yeah, it's another game that for me has got sort of fond memories of playing it back in the Commodore 64 days. Yes, one man and his droid. Uh, next up, another game, which again, I'm doing all the ones that mainly to begin with that have got nostalgic memories for me, not necessarily classics. And this game is by far a classic. It's no, nowhere near a classic. Um, but it's a game that had sort of lots of memories for me. And that is a game called Supergram. Now, uh, those of you that are as old as me may remember that this has come from a TV series called Supergram, obviously. But yeah, so Supergrand was a, game, a TV show that I used to watch. I think it was on Sunday lunch times, and uh, you know it was all about this grand that sort of, and sort of got superpowers and went off to do all these. Uh, sort of like uh, save the planet sort of things and uh, one of the things as well that sort of that's got lots of memories for me and one of the reasons why I actually bought the game was my gram sort of uh, spent a lot of time in Scotland and had a sort of Scottish accent, quite a broad Scottish accent and uh, so and we used to sort of all, always used to call her super gram after the game so uh, or after the show and the game so yeah it's uh, sort of fond memories of that but the actual game <clears throat> it's not very good as you can see super granny is on a sort of um bicycle it's got like these uh, helicopter sort of style blade things on the top and she used to cycle around on it and that's what you're doing in the game you're on that and you're shooting the baddies but the game's got really big sprites and it's only got one screen for the playing area and uh it's sort of like just impossible to sort of keep out of the way of the baddies and keep shooting them but i did play it a lot and i really did get used to the, uh, the, the how close everything was and did get quite far into the game and um, probably absolutely rubbish of it, at it today because it's it is if you play it today it does seem rubbish but back in the day I used to enjoy it and used to play it a fair bit uh, yeah so that's Supergram don't know whether any of you remember that or the TV series if you do uh, let us know in the comments so moving on to another game which is a, a sports sim game really and uh, this is something that I was into, not just actually the uh, the game, but actually into the sport, and that is uh, Speedway, and it's International Speedway. This is done by, uh, I think it was by Silverbird, if I remember rightly, yeah, Silverbird. I think it was only about a 199 game again, like the Mastertronic games. Um, but you took on the role of uh, an international speedway rider and fought your way through the leagues to the top. And uh, a really enjoyable game. That I used to enjoy playing, and I'm a big Speedway fan. I used to go to Speedway every week. Generally, a bit of an armchair armchair Speedway fan these days, and watch it when it's on Sky over here in the UK. That um, you know, Speedway's still really huge, you know, today actually, and it's uh, big on the continent. Poland is their international, it's their um, sort of national sport over in Poland. So uh, yeah, so International Speedway, another game with fond memories for me from back in the Commodore 64 days. Um, another game which I took a lot of stick for actually this and it's uh, Action Biker this was uh, done by sort of all tied in with the uh, the mascot from KP Skips Crisps and the mascot was called Clumsy Colin and obviously being called Colin at school I got took uh, quite a bit of stick for that uh, it used to be called Clumsy Colin after the uh, character but actually Action Biker wasn't a bad game just to enjoy playing it and uh, You've got to go around the, sort of the village or the town and picking things up and doing little stunts and uh, trying to get around the levels and it's quite an enjoyable little game and uh, it's not too bad to play a day actually to tell you the truth, I quite enjoy playing it today so that's another one that I didn't have in my collection that I thought I must add even though it gave me lots of uh, painful memories from being uh, called Clumsy Colin at school <laughs> um, So next up um, we're getting more onto the classics now, and uh, this for me is one of the classics, and it's uh, by Anirog, a software company. I used to buy a lot of their games, and it's Flight Pass 737. 
first flight simulator I ever remember playing. Um, and a lot of people today still say that it was the first uh, flight simulator that they ever played. Not a big fan of flight simulators, but back in the day I was willing to give anything a go. And uh, never really got that far in it, used to crash a lot, never used to get me even managed to take off half the time. Um, but yeah, it's another game that I had fond memories of playing with myself and uh, with my friends. So uh, yeah, uh, I had to add that one to the collection. Uh, next up is a game which first of all I played, I think it was at school, on the BBC Micro. Uh, we used to have a BBC Micro on a trolley that the teachers used to wheel from room to room. And, uh, and they used to hide it away, lock it away at lunch times and break times. But if they were careless, careless, I can't say the word, careless enough to leave it out during lunch time or break time, me and my friends used to sneak in, load some games up on it. And one of the games we always used to play at one point was Chucky Egg. I've actually done um, a Let's Play video for this. I did right back when we first started doing the channel, did some Let's Play Commodore 64 videos. If you haven't checked those out, you might want to take a look. And this is one of the games that I did a, a Let's Play for. Definitely the first platform game I've ever played. One of the earliest games I've played, and definitely the first, I think it was the first platform, one of the first platforms I played. Um, just going around, picking up the eggs and avoiding the big birds, etc. And uh, it's like a, a fun little platformer, which, uh, again, great memories, and it's uh, definitely a classic, if you ask me. And so, how are we doing? I think we've got three, three games left. And... Uh, First one I'm going to show you is, you're going to need no introduction to these next three games which I just didn't have in my collection anymore and I definitely have to get them again. Um, the first one is Jet Set Willy. Like I say, classic platformer. No need for anyone who uh, was around in the Commodore 64 age to be introduced to this. Um, we just played it and played it and played it when this came out, I remember, me and my friends. Uh, so yeah, Jet Set Willy. Had to have that in the collection so Glad to have it back again. Um, following on from Jet Set Willy, obviously got to have Jet Set Willy too. And uh, this one was called uh, The Final Frontier. And uh, sort of very similar platform. Uh, a lot of the rooms look very familiar. If you um, played the first one a lot, you would have been quite good at this. Graphics were quite be uh, quite a bit better. Looked a lot crisper uh, by the time they re released this. So yeah, another one that I uh, just had to had to buy, had to get back in the collection. And finally, my last pickup for the Commodore 64 at the moment, and it's another platforming classic, and that's Manic Miner. I bet a lot of you could guess that, uh, that that was going to be what was coming. But yeah, another platform game that me and my friends played and played and played. Um, you know, cult status, these uh, Jet Set Ready and Manic Miner. And uh, yeah, game that I just had to get so I could play it again. Of course, all these games, for the younger viewers that don't know, came on cassette. And uh, sometimes they would load, sometimes they wouldn't. Um, and they'd often take quite a while to load. I used to get out my uh, Zap64 magazines and read them while uh, waiting for the games to load. So, happy days! And uh, going to be loading all these up and playing them, hopefully over the coming weeks. So, uh, that's it for my pickups at the moment. So. Let's go over to James and uh, see what he's got. Hello, it's James here, and did I hear Colin say, show us your pickups? Well, here we go. First up, we've got Prince of Persia. Now, this is the Rival Swords game. There's several different Prince of Persia's games, but this is on the Wii. I think this game was 20p, 50p, something like that. Pretty cheap. Have a quick look in. Disc, manual, that's what you want, little Nintendo health and safety, don't throw your Wiimote through your telly, instruction book, so yeah, haven't played that yet, but Prince of Persia, yeah, it's, a, it's a good game from the past, I remember playing that on the old PC, first sort of PC game I think I ever played that was, or that and world class leaderboard if anyone remembers that. Next up, Tiger Woods, 2009, all play, don't really know what the all play bit means, maybe you get to play as Tiger and someone else, don't know, everyone plays, anyone can win, so cool, this looks uh, 
graphics on the back look uh, a bit special for a Wii. Yeah, I imagine somewhere in the small print it will say screen pictures taken from PC version or something like that. No, it doesn't, but yeah, the, some really good graphics on the back, but maybe I'm not giving that enough justice. Maybe it's a good game. Will I play it? Of course. Constantly. But yeah, Tiger Woods. And it's got the uh, little hologram to show it's uh, legit. So There we go, Tiger Woods. A bit of golf. Uh, next up, I've heard loads about this game. No More Heroes. Now, I've never played it. It does look good though. Look at the front. Massive sort of lightsaber. So that must be the guy's weapon. Looks really good. Rising Star Games in Luton. So yep, UK company, that's good. 16 plus, so there might be some swearing and a bit more violence in this one. But yeah, another Wii game. Let's have a look. Yep, in the manual. This is either 50p or, yeah, I think 50p. So that's great. That I definitely will be playing. Okay, next we've got a format that I bought into like an idiot. 140 quid I paid for the player for the Xbox. Anyone guessing what it is? Kind of format that died red kind of cases it is HD DVD yeah HD DVD these these crumbled and blu-ray took over as you all know I bought a player came with what's that ape film King Kong yeah King Kong watched it once I think thought the quality of this is great and then didn't buy any more HD DVDs and then a few months later it was uh, in the bargain bin but I bought my player from Blockbuster it was 139.99 and that was reduced I think from 170 and I thought oh that's alright I'll get one now anyway who knows might be collectible in the future but um, I love Terminator and I don't have it on HD DVD and I think this was a pound so bit the bullet no instructions or not instructions no little flyer or anything like that unfortunately but never mind it's uh, I don't think it's even a special edition it's the standard cinema release so no extra extra bits but never mind maybe I'm wrong maybe it's got all the extra bits 147 minutes, so it doesn't say anywhere it's a special edition, but if you're going to watch it, I, I prefer the special edition. But who doesn't love T2? I know I do. What a great cover. And uh, front and back, good old Arnie, Linda Hamilton, and Edward Furlong that I spoke to once on Twitter, which I'm proud of. So yeah, good for him. Good guy. Right. Next, got one of my favourite films of all time from T T2 is obviously one of them. This is as well. You guys might not think that, um, but I do, and I love it. And it is people think it's stupid nonsense. It's Crank on Blu-ray, and this is a pound. Jason Statham, uh, Amy Smart. If you haven't seen this film and you like action nonsense, go. When you finish this video, of course, and you've liked and, sus and subscribed, if I can say it, then go and check this out. This is brilliant. And, um, yeah, just go and watch it. It's just really exciting. Great action film. And this is got a little experience of Blu-ray Revolution. Now, shall I put this in here? The world might end, so I better not. No, so, yeah, little one's leaflet oh look there's a there's a beating heart on the inside little clue about what happens and the heart's got some needles and nails in it so yeah it looks like uh, someone's trying to stop someone's heart 
Game Spoiler <coughs> 1080p of course on Blu-ray go and see it right nearly finished so bear with me last up we've got another game don't usually get films very often but when you see those two you've got to this is Riding Spirits 2 on the PS2 and it's a mobile game in case you can see and <laughs> There you go, with the manual as well, so it's pretty obvious me telling you it's a motorbike game, but never mind, you can see that yourselves, because you're not stupid. Uh, instruction book, this is a Capcom game, so I never knew Capcom released any racing games, but I thought it was Capcom, thought, oh, I never heard of this, let's give it a go, and uh, this looks good, oh, a few scratches, but... You can't complain. Some PS2 fun. Let's see what the reviews are like on that. Pretty plain. But not much to it. Loads of some screenshots of various bikes there. But yeah, loads of they've got loads of licensing from loads of different motorbike companies: Yamaha, Suzuki, Honda, Ducati, BMW. There we go. Another game to the PS2 collection. Right, thank you for that. Thanks for joining. I will hand you back to Colin. Keep it retro. Right, thanks James for that. Some nice pickups there. Uh, the week seems to be getting very collectible these days and uh, lots of people collecting for that. And it was quite dark, wasn't it, over at James's? I was just thinking that. <laughs> um, it looked like I should be doing an episode of Most Haunted or something for some reason. Uh, don't know quite what was going on there. Um, but then, don't worry James as well, because I also bought into the HD DVD uh, before Blu-ray. Thought HD DVD was going to win, uh, but as we all know now, it definitely didn't. This is my little collection that I've got. It's uh, Superman Returns, uh, Transformers 2 Disc Special Edition, uh, the Bourne Ultimator, it's actually still sealed that one and the Transformers one, not got around to watching them. Um, still got my uh, drive upstairs ready to so I could play these at a minute's notice. Uh, Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Uh, the Bourne Supremacy. Colin Farrell and Jamie Foxx in Miami Vice. King Kong, I guess everyone had that when they bought one of these, as James said it came with the drive and The Prestige and uh, quite a good game, uh, good uh, film about uh, magicians that one, I enjoyed that uh, but yeah anyway so uh, yes of course HD DVD took on Blu-ray and Lost a bit like for those of us that remember the VHS and Betamax wall way back in the sort of late 70s early 80s uh, but yeah so that's basically it for this pickups video and uh, like James has already said until next time guys keep it retro Hello! Let's do the happy hands.